Be'ez HaShem is Baruch, we begin Perak Shlich in the third Perak in the Rambam's Hilchah Zib Mechalitza, the Lord Zib Mechalitza in the Sefer Nashim. And we continue on this Halachas, specifically now regarding who do we trust regarding what to proceed with Yib Mechalitza. As the Rambam begins Halacha Aleph regarding the trustworthiness of the husband to say if he has sons or brothers, which are two very important variables regarding the mitzvah of Yib. As the Rambam says, let's say someone says, Zebani, this is my son. Where again, if he has a son, there's no Yib. Aishamari says, Yesh liban. He says, I have sons, which, be that as it may, wherever they are, that means to say, my wife does not have to have Yibam after I pass away. Harizanemon, he's believed. Ufoitris, Ishtim, and Achlitzim, and Yibam, he exempts his wife from Chalitza and from Yibam. And even though we have a presumption, we know that he has brothers, there's no Zika to them, because if he would want to right now, he could divorce his wife with a get. So you have this, what's called Migui of Mal Lashaka, why should he lie for? So because of that Migui, we believe him to exempt his wife from the Zika of Yibam. Moreover, his words don't contradict the Chazaka of the brothers, because even if he has brothers, since he has sons, that is already exempting his wife from Yibam. The Halacha Beis. Let's say, Amr, let's say he says, Ze'achi. This is my brother. Shomo, he says, yes, liach, and he says, I have brothers, which that would make his wife to have a zika for Yibam, which up until now, we didn't know of any brothers, which hence, obviously, there's no Yibam obligation. So, here he's not believed to make his wife forbidden to marry other people until she verses chalitza from these brothers, whoever they are, to, to, that she remains bound to the Yavim, because his intention is, meaning not necessarily for malicious intent, but his intention is to make her forbidden after he passed away, and he's not believed to remove her from a prior chazaka, which up until his announcement, we didn't know of any brothers, and therefore there was a chazaka that she has no zika, he cannot remove with his statement from the chazaka that she was permitted to marry other people. Halacha Gimel. Let's say you Let's say we had a presumption, we knew that there were brothers. Vama B'Shas Misas, and he says at the time of death, which is a very auspicious moment, People don't usually lie at that moment. And he says, and he says, I know everyone thought I was brothers. I don't have any brothers. And hence, obviously, she's exempt from this. There's no bond over here with any of them. In the Neman, he's not believed. We're, here he doesn't have what we could say what's called Biyad Lagarsha. Because why not? He could divorce her now. So why don't you say that should exempt her? Because this Migui would fly in the face of a Chazaka, which we had a Batil now, a Chazaka, that there were brothers that she has an obligation of Yibam. And how could we believe him that there is not? In contrast, in the previous halacha, when he says, I have sons, that doesn't contradict the chazak of the brothers. It's even though there's brothers. Yeah, but if he has sons, then she's going to be exempt. And therefore, there he was believed. In contrast, over here, he's not believed. Let's say also if he says, on someone that we had a presumption that was his brother, and he says, Ein Zach is not my brother. Again, Ein Neman is not believed to nullify her prior chazaka, which that she had a bond to this Yavim. Everyone thought it's his brother. He says, it's not my brother. He's not believed because it's, he's going to negative chazaka. Let's say, let's say we didn't have a presumption that they were brothers. But there were some rumors that there are witnesses somewhere that could testify that the husband has brothers. Obviously, if he has brothers, then the, the widow is not permitted until she has Yim from them. But the witnesses were in some other country. Even if this person who's dying says at the time of the, the moment of death, I don't have a brother, still she has to be concerned, but she has to wait for marrying other people that maybe there's some substance, substance to those rumors, and maybe there are brothers that she has a zika bond to, and therefore she has to wait until the witnesses that were said about, until they come, and they can ask them that, is it true or not? Because since it's something that Efsha Levruri could verify it and, and with, with asking the witnesses, we have to verify and not be leaning regarding something as strong as the Isser of Eshes Ish. Halo Chadal. Misha Zane Misha. Someone had an extramarital affair with another woman. Ben Penuya, Ben Eshes Ish, whether she was single or whether she was a married woman. Ben Abra, and she was impregnated. Vamani says, Zehu Uba Mimenuhu. This woman... She was impregnated from me. And even if that woman agrees and admits that's true, yeah, we he fathered this child. Though that now this son has the halacha of his son for the grand laws of inheritance, because the reason why we believe him is because if he wants to, he could anyways gift it all to this child anyway. So regarding the laws of inheritance, he's considered like his son, but I raise a suffix in the Yibum, but it's still considered only as a doubt regarding the laws of Yibum. 
if we should believe him that this is really his son, why? Because just like this woman was mezana with him, so she could have other relationships with other men. How can we know for sure the paternity that this is his child? There's no chazak over here because if from the inception of the child we never knew who the paternity is. And then we can't say, oh, it retains its original chazak as we usually say with uh, uh, paternity. And Lo Ilm Safak would rather know this child's holding me a situation of doubt. Maybe it's not his son, and maybe this his wife is going to be the widow of a man who did not have any children. So Ulahmadon Bay. So rather we, we treat it stringently, which Balakilat says Blemis Abemis. Maybe it is his son, and therefore it's forbidden for the brother in law to do Yibu. But at the same time, she requires Khalitza because maybe it's not his son, and she does require Khalitza from the other. Now, halacha hey, the Ramah continues regarding the trustworthiness of witnesses regarding the husband's death, which is the precursor to the halacha of Yibum. Halacha hey, neman eidachad, a singular witnesses believed lahoid liyvama shemez bala to testify to the Yibum that her husband passed away, and she could now do Yibum based on his testimony. Oi, or even the singular witness could testify shemez yivama that her brother-in-law, the one that she would have to do Yibum with, passed away. Or that her husband had a son, Latiyu Lazar, which now that he's dead, would permit the widow to get marry a foreigner because he died with a child. In contrast to the Rive, it says that actually that witness is not believed to say that the husband had a son because that's not something that's ultimately going to be revealed and maybe he's lying. In contrast to the Rambam holds that no, the woman's not going to rely on just a witness itself and she's going to be precise to know if it's true or not so that she's not going to have to leave the new husband, after she gets married, as Ram says later on, and therefore we're going to believe, and there's a witness, as a single witness, well, as we always say, for Igunam, even to say that the husband had a child, and that she could marry someone else. And this, even if it's a slave or a woman, or even a, a non-Jew that's innocently talking, that made B'misa's Yavim, that he's testifying that the Yavim passed away, just like we said that he could testify regarding a married woman to permit her that her husband passed away to marry someone else when there's no law of Yibam. Like we explained in Now, just like over there, five women, they cannot testify for the other one that the husband passed away. Just so that's going to have the same halacha, that she cannot testify that the Yavam passed away that she could go ahead and marry someone else. And the din zu and the halachas of this testimony, this is like that halacha of that testimony of the husband passing away. regarding the laws of the witnesses, when you have witnesses that are contradicting each other, if the yavim passed away, just like over there, if the husband passed away, and for all halachic purposes, these are going to have the same halachas regarding the laws of witnesses and regarding that of the five women that are not able to testify for the husband dying, so too for the yavim dying. Allah Chazayin, the Ram continues with, let's say Shtei Yavamas. Let's say there are two Yavamas, meaning these women married to two brothers. Shabam Medin Sayyam, that they come from Medin Sayyam, so they're the other one's Yavama, because it's her sister-in-law, because they married brothers. They both come from overseas, and each one makes the claim, Zur Mez, this one says, Meis Bali, my husband died. Zur Mez, this one says, Meis Bali, my husband died. So the Allah is like this, Zur Asura, this one's forbidden to marry Someone else, then they bala shalzu, because of the husband of the of the of her sister-in-law, which is her yavama, which meaning her yavam, she has a zika bond with, and he's not here to do chalitza. The and the other one's forbidden. Not, not she's believed to say her husband died, but she's forbidden because of the husband of her sister-in-law, which is her brother-in-law. Because she ain't yevimta in the men's lahoidla she makes yevama. Because her yevama, which is one of the five women that we said in the previous halacha, is not believed to testify that her yavam passed away. Kamesh Anu, like we explained in the previous halacha. So because of that, each one's forbidden because of her, the possibility of her brother-in-law still being alive, and that's so. Therefore, both are stuck because of the other one. Now halacha ches, but let's say hayla achas men eight shemiz bala. Let's say one of them had witnesses, had a witness that her husband passed away. So it's not just her claim; she had a witness. So Zushi Yishla Ha'ed, actually, interesting, paradoxically, the one who has the witness, Aymedus B. So she actually remains permitted to marry someone else. She'en has to Nebala, because the reason why she's been is not because of her husband. You're right, her husband's dead. And we would even believe herself. So the fact that she has a witness is not why it's forbidden. It's rather because of her Yavam, meaning there's no witnesses on the death of her Yavam. The only one who's testifying is her Yavam, meaning her sister-in-law. And she's not believed, like we said. 
But the Zusha in Laid Muteris, the one who does not have a witness that her husband died, actually is permitted. Shari Haid Ho'ech and Mesiyavama, because that witness is testifying that her brother in law passed away, which we do believe the Eid Echad. And she herself believed to say that her husband passed away. So her husband's dead. And we have a witness that her brother-in-law passed away. Now, halacha test. Let's say one of these Yavamas, one of these women who was saying that her husband passed away, she had children from her husband, which obviously there's no halacha of Yib on her. But the other one doesn't have children. So the one that doesn't have children is going to be forbidden because of the zika to her brother-in-law. But the one that has children is going to be permitted. Now, regarding the prior halacha, when we have these two Yavamas that don't have children, so that was, we said they can't do anything because we don't believe the sister-in-law that the brother-in-law passed away. But let's say, So that was where they married two brothers and those two brothers they claim he died overseas. Let's say there was a third brother over here where they're coming back to. So he'll do yibam to the two of them because that's, they're, either from, they're from two different brothers and therefore that's two different halachas of yibam chalit. It's not like a co-wife which doing on one exempts the other. Now, halacha yud says the Rambam, but let's say, my son. Let's say this Yavim who was over here, after he did Yibim to them, he passed away, and then he didn't leave over children. So it comes that now that both of them have a zika because of the death of the Yavim to their brother in laws, which possibly are still alive overseas, because we never verified that, because each Yavim was not believed for the other one. Then, as seriously, Nasalazar, because but now they're again back forbidden to marry some other person, like they initially were before they did Yibim to this brother, because again, each one's not believed to say the other one's bro- husband died. Now, but let's say he did Yibim, the one over here, and then he divorced them from the Yibim. And the same thing would be if, let's say, he dies where he had children from them, where again, now there's no more Zika from Yibim, then then they'd be permitted to marry some other person because they don't have any more Zika of Yibim on them. But again, if he died without any children, now they have a Yibim from him to that brother, and there might be a brother overseas. Now, now the Ramam continues regarding the trustworthiness of the woman. Says the Ramam, even though the woman is believed to say, she's believed to say, my husband died, that she could get remarried, or that she could do Yibim. But any of them in the men's lemma, but the Yibim is not believed to say, to say that by my brother-in-law, the Yavim, that he died, that now that he's out of the way and there's no more brothers, that you can marry some other person. Why? Why should I not believe over there? Halibu is to love, since that prohibition of marrying some other person when her Yavim is still alive and didn't do Yim Chalitza is only a negative prohibition, not that of a Erev of Karas, maybe it's going to be a light in her eyes to go ahead and bypass that Isra. And she's not going to be so precise to really find out if her Yavim died or not, in contrast to if saying her husband died, which that's the Isra Eshaz Ish, which you get a Mrs. Bezin, and that her son from the second one would be Mazem, that she would be careful. So then we believe her, but regarding to say her Yavim died, that we don't believe her. But in the Yavim, Nemo so to the Yavim, the brother was not believed to say, that my brother died, she that he could do Yibim on his sister-in-law, because maybe he has laid eyes on her and he wants to marry her, even though his brother's not really dead. Also, the woman's not believed to say, My sister died. That she can marry her brother in law, which a uh, man's forbidden in his sister in law, his, his wife's sister, only as long as his wife is alive. So the sister cannot say, Oh, my sister died, that now she can marry that brother in law. And the English name so a man is not believed to say, That my wife died, she says that he can marry her sister. Until you have two witnesses who testify that her, that her sister passed away. And then she can enter into her husband's, into her brother in law's house. As the Ram explains, because they didn't believe with the testimony of a single witness, and for sure the woman herself. That was only for the permissibility of a forlorn woman, where she cannot marry anyone in the world if we don't accept the, the Eid Echad's testimony. But here, she can marry other people, and the brother in law can marry other women. Commissioner Miyadlov explained in the end of Hilchas Gerushin that we don't want the woman to remain Naguna and therefore that we made the leniency. But all other cases, we did not apply this leniency. Now, Allah Yud Beis, let's figure, therefore, it says the Rambam that since we don't believe her to say that my Yavam, my brother in law, the one who I have to be even with, passed away, so So if a woman with her husband and her brother in law went overseas, Above Amish comes back and she says, Bali my husband died, and then my brother in law passed away. Or she says the other way, first my brother in law passed away, then my husband died. She's not trusted to get married to someone else because she has no brother in law. She rather retains her prior chazaka that she has a mitzvah of Yibum because we knew that there was a brother in law. And she's not believed to say that he passed away. 
let's say only her and her husband go overseas on a trip. And there was no Yavim over here, and therefore she had a Chazaka that if her husband was going to die, she's permitted to marry some other person. And she comes and she says like this. She says, truth is, I want you to know, uh, my, my, my mother-in-law gave birth to another son, meaning to say my brother got a Yavim, meaning got another brother, which is my Yavim, overseas. But the mace, but he died. Now, Bain Shomer, whether she says, May Siva, May Ve'achach, May Zbali, that first my brother-in-law died, and then my husband died, or Bain Shomer, whether she says, May Zbali, Ve'achach, May Zayam, Shnitli, or first my husband died, and then the brother-in-law that was given uh, uh, died, it doesn't make a difference. Her reason the men is, she's believed to go and marry someone else, and the reason for it is, is the Talmudic dictum of, Sha'apesh, Sha'asa, because the mouth that's making her forbidden, which she's the one who said that, I have a Yavam, which she's making herself obligated in the Zika of Yim, which we never knew about, because we never knew about another, uh, any brother. That's her same mouth that's permitting her because she's saying that he died. So therefore, we never knew her to be forbidden. And therefore, she's making herself forbidden. She could also make herself permitted. The other variable. There's always two variables regarding the laws of Yibam. If there's a brother-in-law and if there's a son. So if the woman and her husband and her son go overseas. She comes and she says, and that's why we're always saying which one's first, because here it's going to be applicable. Let's say she said first that my husband passed away, and then my son passed away. So, Nemenis, she's believed to then go ahead and get married to someone else. Because she was always in the permission of marrying someone else. When she left, because if her husband's going to die, we always know that she has a son, and obviously she doesn't have a Zika bond for Yibam. Let's say, let's say she says, let's say it's the other order. First my son passed away, and then my husband passed away. Now the, the primary element of Yib Mechalitza is, at the time of death, does he have a child? Now, the way she's saying it now, her son died first, so she, her husband didn't have a child when he died. No, she's not believed to go ahead and do Yibum to her brother-in-law, because she always had a chazaka that there's no zika to the brother-in-law, because we knew that there was a child. Now we have to be concerned that maybe she's lying because she loves her brother-in-law, and she wants him, at least him, to marry her. But, so she can't do Yibam, but but we are concerned for her words stringently, not to allow her to get married to some other person, because based on what she's saying, that her, that her son died first, she does have a Zika to the Yavam, so she makes herself forbidden to any other person. And therefore, Bechilat says, therefore, the brother-in-law does Chalitza, to at least permit her to someone else. But again, cannot do Yibam, because it goes in the face of the Chazaka, that we know that there was no Zika bond to the Yavam. Let's say only her and the husband that they went on this trip, which comes out that she, and we knew that she had a, a brother-in-law, a Yavim, and therefore there's a Chazaka that she has a Zika bond to him if her husband would die, because they didn't have children. She comes along and she says, I want you to know, I had a child overseas, but Mason, he died. And then my husband died. So it comes out, the way she's saying it, that she has a Zika bond, because at the time of death, he didn't have a child. So the man is, so she's believed what she's saying, and there's a mitzvah of Yibam. Because when she left, that was the chazak, the bezamtib was that she's going to be permitted to the Yavam, because when she left, she didn't have any child. And she's saying she had one, but he died before, which retains the mitzvah of Yibam. So it's going to, she's going to be believed, and she'll do Yibam. Now, Amr, let's say she says, Let's say she says that, no, my husband first died, and then the son that we had, which no one ever knew about, he subsequently died, and therefore at the time of death, which is the primary kaveya that establishes the obligation, she did not have a zika for Yibam. Ah, ain't in the men that's left to Atzim from the Yibam and the Chalitza. She did not believe to exempt herself from Yibam and from Chalitza because she had a Chazaka that she did have this bond with the Yavam. But but we are concerned for her words not to allow Yibam, based on what she's saying, there is no zika for Yibam. So for Chalitza, for the so rather, the brother does Chalitza and not Yibam. Allah the Zavav, the Ram continues, says, but when do we say this, that based on what she's saying, at least will require chalitza, is only if she was already prohibited to marry uh, subsequently a kain from the beginning. I mean, before she married this husband who passed away, she was already forbidden to a kain. For example, she has a grusha chalala, that she was a, a divorcee, or she was born from a, a, a forbidden union of a, a kain and a grusha, which makes her a chalala, which is also forbidden to a kain. Or she says, that we were in a cave when my husband passed away, and there was no one else there to testify who died first, my husband or my son. In those cases, we're going to say, okay, out of the doubt that she's claiming, the way she's saying it, although we don't really believe it because it's chazaka, but we'll require chalitza. But if, let's say, it was not like that, 
meaning she was never forbidden to her kayin before this death, and it wasn't just in the cave, then in the chalet says, we're not going to have chalitza. Why not? What do you mean? Based on what she's saying, she's saying that she is obligated to be chalitza, because shem atachlitz, because, okay, what are you going to do? Maybe they can do chalitza. Vivo eidim, and then what's going to happen is that witnesses are going to come along and say, as she said, that is, is and that really the husband died first, before the son died, and therefore, based on what she's saying, you're right, there's no zika for, for the yavam, and the nimtzah's chalitza is doing the clone. It's going to come out that this chalitza really is, is nothing, because it's true. She, she, the, the, we thought, we had a chazaka that she is obligated. Now, we can't, we can't do it because of what she's saying, so, okay, but we still require chalitza. But let's say it's true, what, like she said, and it's going to come out that really the chalitza was, was nothing, because she, she had a child, at, he had a child at the time of the death, and then, so what's going to happen is, so she's not a chalutza. V'tinas so l'koyin, she's going to still get married to a koyin. The koyin's forbidden the chalutza, but it comes that she's not really a chalutza. Oh, the problem is, v'yir ha'roi, so she's not a chalutza, the one who saw that she got chalutza, and then so, suddenly she get married to a koyin, v'yidam, he's going to think, she's going to think, she's going to think, hey, wait a second, chalutza is going to get married to a koyin. But when he did be in trouble, because he's not going to know about the second half of the story, which is that no witnesses of the Gwani came along and said that no, it's true, like she said, that there was no zika here at all, and therefore the chalutza was not a chalutza at all. So the fika chlitachet was yam. Therefore, no, she should not have chalitza and not yibum. El tishar becheska is a kukish kish. You have to rather she should remain with the original chazaka, which was that she had a zika bond as she left. As she avoid him until witnesses come along and testify, like she's saying, that then we know that there's no bond and therefore there's not going to be an unnecessary chalitza. Because if we do that, it might come to a situation where it might give the appearance that a chalitza is getting married to a coin. But again, if she was in a cave, no witnesses are going to come, okay, then we're not going to run to that problem where, yes, she'll remain forbidden to a coin, even though she's saying that she's not, because she's saying, really, I don't require anything, but because of the chazaka, we, we know there was a zikabon, so we'll have to do uh, either yim chalitza, we can't do yim based on what she's saying, but we'll do chalitza, and, and because we're not going to run into that problem. Or, again, if she was anyways forbidden to a coin from beforehand, where, okay, anyways, you're not going to marry a coin. Forget about this situation, because of chalitza, simply because she was already grusha or halala, so then you could also go ahead and do the chalitza and to wait for the witnesses to come. Now, look at the Zion, the Ram continues regarding, let's say we have a doubt, if there are sons or brothers, which are two of the variables regarding if Yibam is done or not. Look at the Zion. Let's say if a woman goes with her husband and her co-wife, the other wife of the husband, to overseas. Now, two witnesses came along. Uh, the, the case is Isha, she doesn't go. Her husband and her co-wife, she stayed back. The co-wife with the husband, they went on their trip. And and then two witnesses came along and said to her, to the one who remained over here, your husband passed away. She can't do chalitza nor yibam forever. Ad, until she until she finds out if her co-wife had a child overseas from her husband, and then she can get married to whoever she wants to because the fact that her husband had a child exempts her from Yibum. Or that if there was no child, and then if you know there was no child, then you can do Yibum or Chalitza. Why can't you do Chalitza after nine months from when the husband had passed away? Now, with the nine months, we understand why she cannot have Chalitza done because maybe the co-wife is pregnant and it's not going to be a viable child. And even to do Chalitza on a pregnant woman, is not a valid chalitza, even if the chalitza herself is not the pregnant one, but rather the co-wife is pregnant, in that interim period when you can't do yibum because maybe there's a, a fetus and it's going to be a viable child, you, at the same time you can't do chalitza. But what the, what's bothering the Ram is, but okay, why can't you do chalitza after nine months from when the husband passed away? The team of Teres Lazar Kabam, then either way you look at it, should be admitted to a, uh, another person, as the Ram explains. Shim yelled it to us because if after the nine months it turns out that her co-wife had a child, Sorry, Nifter is Zeus. So then she's exempt from Yibum and she's allowed to marry whoever she wants to because her husband had a child. Vim loyal, then, if it turns out he didn't have a child, her inechlitza. So then she got chalitza. Why can't Yibum and Manam do chalitza? Ah, so this is similar like we said in the previous halacha. He's there, it's a rabbinic concern. Shem Yavadacha chalitza, because maybe you're going to find that after that we did this chalitza. Out of doubt, we didn't know what the story was. Look, we did chalitza. We're going to find that she yelled at Sarasa, blood shall kayama, that her co wife actually was pregnant and had a child. The nymphs is going to come out, the zoi shein a chalutza is coming out that this woman wasn't really a chalutza because it was unnecessary. Because her husband from the other wife had a child. Ah, I said, Matinas a kain achash nelza. She'll get married to a kain. I'm not a chalutza. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a regular man who could get married to a kain. 
Oh, but I'm a right, and then the one who sees is going to say, huh, who shall I other be in Shabbat? He, he doesn't know about the second half of the story. The witness came along and told us the end of the story, which was that we, she didn't really need chalutza because the, the co wife had a baby. He's going to think, Shachalutza Matas A chalutza is Pimit Zakain. The Yoy Chiro is, and this is the Kuan, I'll be best. And he's going to say, he's going to testify. He says, yeah, I saw that, that her get married to a Kain based on the ruling of the court, which is incorrect. So, says Ram, if she was forbidden to Kuna from the beginning, that she was a Gerusha Achalal when she married the first man, okay, then Harezu Chalitza is Lachatisha, but then yes, she'll do Chalitza after nine months and get married to another person, like we said, Mimonavsha. But again, if, we, if she wasn't, then we, we, we'd be concerned, like we said, because of this problem that might arise. Now, Avulzah had Sara, Shahisim Balakishmez, but this co wife, who she was with the husband when he passed away overseas, she has to be tamted tishim yom kishar yom. She has to wait 90 days like other yavamis who they cannot do chalitza yibam until after 90 days from the husband passed away because we have to know if she's pregnant from the first husband or not. And then Metachal said, Does she have to chalitza or yibam? But like tachash litzurasa shemadina acher, she doesn't have to be concerned for her co wife in that other country, meaning the one that remained over here when she went overseas on her trip to say that maybe this one is pregnant. Because the husband wasn't with her in the country. He was with her overseas, and then we know that he for sure was not pregnant from her, and therefore she could just go ahead and do this Yimechalitza after 90 days from when her husband passed away. Now, Allah Yitzhan Duram continues, If a woman that her husband passed away, and he didn't leave over any children, and he didn't have any brothers, so obviously there's no halacha of Yibam, she had a mother-in-law overseas. So, Said the Rambam in the Cheshesh, I'm not concerned Shemi Yolda Chamoisa, then maybe the mother in law had a, had, a, had a boy, and maybe she had a child. Not only she had a child, maybe the child was a boy in some other country. They weren't so concerned for that that maybe she got pregnant, maybe it was a boy. Rather, the, 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 the woman, the widow, remains with her Chazaka, and she remains permitted to go to marriage to someone else because we didn't know of any brothers. Same thing applies to a woman that her husband passed away. And they had a son living in some other country. So the widow is permitted to marry some other person. We're not concerned, oh, maybe the son had died, and oh, therefore this husband's dying without any children. She retains her chazaka that no, there was a son, and she permitted to marry someone else. Let's say her mother in law, she left town when she was pregnant. So, although we didn't know that this husband had any brothers, but the mother in law left pregnant. Then we have to be concerned. And then, therefore, she cannot marry someone else until she finds out what happened with the pregnancy of her mother in law. Maybe that she gave birth to a, another son before her husband passed away. Again, if it was afterwards, then it wouldn't be because that's Aisha's actual Haiba Lamai. But rather, it, 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 he would find out, she has to find out if, if there was a brother born before her husband passed away. If a woman that her husband and her son went overseas, and they came along the bad news, your husband passed away, and then your son passed away. So based on that, when the husband died, there was a child, and they were permitted to marry someone else. So based on that testimony, she went, she got married to someone else. And then she found there was actually the opposite. First her son passed away, and then her husband, which means to say that she actually had a zika, she was bound to the oven. Because at the time of the death, there was no child. So Tayseh, she has to leave that other person, but Bahavol Kasha, the child that she had from that other person is going to be Kasha because when the Yavama marries the Zar, it's only a negative prohibition, and the mom is only when you have from a liability of a, that which is punishable by Kars. Now, let's say, Amullah, let's say it said to her the opposite. They told him, Meis Beneich, Valkach Meis Bal. First your son passed away, and then your husband passed away. So based on that testimony, Venesiaba, she went and did Yibam because her husband died when he already didn't have a child. And then she found there was actually the opposite. It comes out she actually was forbidden to the Yavam. And not only that, that's called Isha Isha Zach Shleb Makamitza. That's a Chiv of a chorus because it's her regular brother in law, which has no permissibility of, of Yibam because actually the son actually was alive when her husband passed away. So then Taysi has to leave the Yavam. And the child that was born, either before the report or after the report, is going to be a mamzer, illegitimate child, because the halach is that a mamzer is from those which is from a union of chiva krisis, which is what this relationship is with this yavam and the yavam, which was not really her yavam because her husband had a child at the time of death, and it's a regular prohibition of Aishas uh, of, of, of his brother's wife.